All right, you know, we're all adults here. We've seen what one too many Mai Tais can do to your otherwise educated and professional colleagues. What about younger minds, though? We know booze is bad for kids, but some just-released research offers startling new evidence that the earlier you take that first drink, the stiffer the consequences, including a much higher risk for a life of dependency and possibly irreversible brain damage. Well, that'll make you sit up and take notice. Dr. Aaron White is a professor at Duke University Medical Center. His research focuses on adolescent brains and alcohol. Good to have you with us tonight, doctor. My pleasure. And give us an idea. First of all, most adults are going to admit to you, and, you know, hey, I had my first drink before I was 21, but, mm -hmm. but how young is too young here? Well, first of all, I have to say that alcohol abuse at any age can be bad for your brain. It turns out the younger brains, though, for some reason, seem to be uh, more sensitive to some of the effects of alcohol. How young is too young? I really can't tell you that. What I can tell you is several large studies suggest that the earlier we start drinking, the greater the likelihood that we'll go on to become dependent. And so with each day that a kid waits, statistically, the odds go down that they'll ever go on to have a problem with alcohol. What we don't know is whether that's causal or simply correlational. Mm -hmm. Most of this research, including the most recent study published, asks adults when, when they started drinking and then correlates the age of onset of okay. drinking with their likelihood of being an alcoholic. So, so why are young brains so vulnerable here? Well, I think we have to remember that what adolescence is, this, it's the transition from being a, being a kid to being an adult. And there's a tremendous amount of stuff that you have to learn in order for that to happen. So during the second decade of life, roughly when adolescence occurs, the brain seems to be very flexible, very moldable, so that we can absorb that material and then get out into the world ready to go. <laughs> Whenever the brain is changing, it seems to be more vulnerable to the effects of alcohol. Alcohol uh, does a great job, better job than most drugs, of stopping the brain from changing with experience. So are these, in terms of long-term effects, is this something that you can repair? Well, I think that, you know, there's, there's probably two ways to answer that question. One is, because the brain is changing during the teen years, and then once you enter your early 20s, that brain development really slows tremendously, there are the odds. The, odd, the odds are that if you, if you mess it up, if you don't take advantage of the changes taking place in your brain, you could be stuck with those things. So that's one thing. The other thing is, when we actually look at the hard data, some of the effects that teen drinking um, has, it does look like some of these effects are either ameliorated with time or at least not as bad as they could be. If you take kids that are in treatment and you look at them after treatment, this is work by Susan Tapert and Sandra Brown at UCSD, you follow kids after treatment, those that go back to drinking heavily fare far worse eight years down the road than kids who stay sober after treatment in terms of attention and some of these other important functions. Okay. So I would say it's sort of yes and no. It depends on the situation. <laughs> uh, real quickly, some of this new information we were talking about is, is from the Archives of Pediatrics and Adolescent uh, Medicine. It stresses that uh, the risks, as we talked about, between early drinking and higher levels of dependency later on. Mm -hmm. Is this just two? Is this one or two beers when you're 16? Or it really has to be a significant amount? There's no known threshold. My guess okay. is that we're talking about repeated drunkenness. When I right. personally talk about the long-term effects of alcohol on the brain, the potential long-term effects, I mean, remember, this is mostly preliminary data. I'm mostly talking about repeated drunkenness, not it's, just having a drink or and, two. And that would make sense. Before we let you go, obviously, a lot of parents looking at this going, okay, now i got some new fuel to add to the fire. Mm -hmm. How do you talk to your kids about this to make them understand? Well, I think step one is parents have to arm themselves with information. And for that, I would recommend going to websites like the NIAAA website. Tons of material there on this topic for parents. Once you've armed yourself with information, then you do the most important thing you can do to prevent alcohol abuse among kids, and that's talk to them about it. Let them know what your expectations are for their alcohol use. Let them know how you feel about it. The most important thing that parents can do is simply talk to their kids about alcohol use and other risks that face adolescents. Excellent advice there. Dr. Aaron White, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks it's for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you.